Imagine for a moment the entire digital world we live in. Our phones, computers, AI systems, smart cars, satellites, and even national defense networks running on a heartbeat produced in one place, a chip. For decades, the world has quietly revolved around these tiny slivers of silicon, unseen by most, but essential to all. And at the center of this unseen empire has stood one name, TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. They've been the undisputed global leader in chip production for over 30 years, supplying the technological lifeblood to giants like Apple, NVIDIA, AMD, Qualcomm, and nearly every company that matters in the tech industry. Every time you swipe on your iPhone, talk to your voice assistant, or stream your favorite series, a piece of TSMC's engineering brilliance is working in the background. Their 3 nanometer and 5 nanometer process technologies aren't just impressive. They're the most advanced manufacturing processes human beings have ever created. The world has depended on TSMC's consistency, innovation, and dominance. It's been the status quo. But that status quo is cracking. And what's rising in its place is nothing short of astonishing. Far from Silicon Valley, in a facility tucked into the industrial sprawl of Shanghai, something has changed. A Chinese company that was once dismissed as being years behind has done what no one thought possible. They've moved forward, fast, and not just with progress, but with breakthroughs that defy the very logic that has guided the global semiconductor industry for decades. That company is SME, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, and they may have just detonated the most silent but far-reaching explosion in the history of modern technology. For years, SMIC was considered an also-ran. While TSMC was creating 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer chips that powered AI models, autonomous vehicles, and supercomputers, SMIC was struggling with 14 nanometer manufacturing, technology that, by industry standards, was already outdated. The gap seemed enormous, uncrossable, especially after the United States, backed by its allies, imposed sweeping export restrictions in 2022. These sanctions were surgical, designed to stop China's advancement cold. The West controlled the critical equipment, especially the extreme ultraviolet lithography machines manufactured only by ASML in the Netherlands. The logic was airtight, no EUV, no leading-edge chips. Game over. Except it wasn't. Because behind the scenes, SMIC didn't give up. They doubled down. While the world was watching the U.S.-China trade war, while global headlines focused on TikTok bans and Huawei restrictions, Something far more consequential was happening quietly, methodically, and with intense determination. SMIC was assembling talent from around the world. Not just local engineers, but experts from Taiwan, South Korea, and even defectors from the very companies that once stood as their competition. They were investing billions, not in marketing, but in R&D, in infrastructure, and in developing their own tools. They were playing the long game, and they weren't playing by the old rules. Satellite imagery began to reveal unusual activity at their plants. Lights burning all night. Machinery running 24 hours a day. Heat signatures showing energy usage that pointed to non-stop production cycles. Procurement logs uncovered obscure third-party purchases of high-precision equipment, often routed through indirect channels. There were whispers in the semiconductor supply chain of new capabilities, of chips emerging from SMIC that shouldn't exist, at least not yet. And then came the moment of confirmation. In early 2024, SMIC announced they had successfully produced 5 millimeter chips. It wasn't a loud announcement. In fact, it was almost deliberately low-key. But people who understood the industry knew what it meant. This wasn't just an upgrade. It was a message. A signal that China's flagship chip maker had somehow found a way to sidestep the chokehold the West believed would contain them. This wasn't supposed to happen. SMIC didn't have EUV machines. They didn't have access to the most advanced photoresists, and yet, somehow, they had arrived. From there, the story accelerated. Analysts began reporting strange patterns in global supply chains. Companies that had never sourced chips from SMIC were suddenly placing orders. Not for consumer-grade components, but for critical pieces used in AI, 5G, data centers, and even defense-related hardware. SMIC's client base, previously limited to regional Chinese companies, had quietly expanded, and the orders were large. By mid-2024, a testing facility in Europe received a shipment of chips for analysis. They were marked as SM Ike produced 5 mm units. What they found stunned them. The chips not only performed well, they exceeded expectations in power efficiency, 
thermal performance, and structural complexity. They matched or beat seven nanometer products from TSMC just two years prior. But that wasn't the most shocking part. What really caught attention was the manufacturing signature. Subtle tells in the chip's internal structure that revealed something unexpected. These weren't simply copies of Western chips. They had been built differently, uniquely. They weren't just catching up. They were innovating. So how was this possible? The answer lies not in a single breakthrough, but in a series of quiet revolutions. SMIC didn't recreate TSMC's pathway. They carved a new one. They combined traditional DUV lithography with process enhancements that pushed the limits of physics. They developed hybrid lithography strategies using techniques previously thought inefficient or too error-prone for mass production. But through relentless iteration, investment, and reverse engineering, they made it work. They also tapped into something the West may have underestimated, collective national focus. SMIC's progress wasn't isolated. It was part of a massive, coordinated effort spanning universities, government research labs, private startups, and policy frameworks all pushing toward one goal, semiconductor independence. This wasn't just one company making gains. It was a nation unlocking its own silicon supply chain. And while it's easy to think about chips as just tech products, the truth is they're now strategic assets. This isn't about smartphones anymore. This is about control over AI, over communication networks, over the machinery of war and peace, of economy and influence. The emergence of SMIC as a credible competitor to TSMC isn't just a business story. It's a geopolitical turning point. Now the world is watching closely. The U.S. is scrambling to assess the implications. Export controls are being reevaluated. Intelligence agencies are tracking not just what SMIC is making, but how. TSMC is responding by ramping up global expansion. New fabs are under construction in Arizona, Japan, and Germany. They're moving fast, but they're also under pressure like never before. Because for the first time in decades, there's another player in the game who can play at their level. This shift has opened doors for others too. Countries in Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, places that were never central to the chip supply chain, are now being courted as new nodes in a decentralized world. The global tech ecosystem is fragmenting. Instead of a single unified infrastructure, we may be entering an age of technological blocks, one led by the West, another by China. And the effects are already reaching you. Devices may get cheaper, but compatibility may suffer. Innovation may accelerate, but standards may diverge. Security vulnerabilities may increase as competing systems no longer communicate cleanly. You may not see these changes in headlines, but you will feel them in your products, your services, and how your data moves across borders. Yet, amid all this, there's an undeniable truth emerging. The age of technological singularity, the idea that one company, one country, one region controls it all, is over. We are stepping into a multipolar tech future, one driven not just by competition, but by necessity. One where innovation is no longer a luxury, it's a survival strategy. Whether that future brings resilience or more fragmentation remains to be seen. But one thing is certain. The chips that power tomorrow will be built by more hands in more places with more urgency than ever before. Stay aware. This isn't just a story about chips. It's a story about power. Who has it, who's losing it, and who's rewriting the rules.